resilience of the soul, the persistence to live, make a difference. First of all, it's a great honor and pleasure for me as a former Secretary General uh, to be amongst so many people, whether they are known or not known, uh, to have been fighting against to protect human rights and freedom all around the world. The United Nations Charter, there are three major purposes. One is uh, peace and security and sustainable economic development, then human rights. These three principles are closely interrelated. There are some countries seemingly, uh, people seem to be enjoying economic or social development, but if their human rights are not re respected, under tight uh, dictatorial regime, then however much economic development, social development may be there. You know, and I'm now teaching a course at Columbia University um, with an uh, academic who's the dean of the School of International and Public Affairs, who's an expert in crisis decision making and particularly in the psychology of leaders. What, what motivates leaders is that you cannot look at a dictator and assume that person acts on the kind of rational basis that you think of when you consider rationality. Uh, Mr. Chairman, for organizing and arranging this uh, very important uh, dinner occasion, uh, frankly speaking, when I was invited, I thought this is just eating and enjoy <laughs> But I realize that this is a place uh, where many leaders of uh, filmmakers are participating and exchanging your experiences, etc., etc. Et At the same time, as a Secretary General, I had to work very closely with your people, particularly actors and actresses. I have been, I have been mobilized uh, many, many uh, such uh, very world-class uh, actors and actresses for the purpose of the United Nations. Uh, for example, uh, Michael Douglas uh, is a member of uh, uh, Peace Envoy of the Second General. And, uh, uh, what is his name? There's many people here. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Craig. Oh, yes, oh, yes. James Bond. You, you can really change the world. You don't have any political power. You don't have any physical power. But by making good movies, you can really change the world for the better. world is now going through all this dangerous path because of the climate, climate changes, etc. So this may be one of the ways you can contribute to the work of the United Nations. Even though I'm no longer Secretary General, uh, I've been touring the world and speaking about uh, women's rights, climate change, sustainable development, human rights, etc., etc. And I wish you continued success. So I really count on your contribution uh, for making the world a better world for. Thank you very much. I just read that uh, economists carried out a study in 2020 that 85% uh, of uh, female face uh, uh, violence uh, or harassment while acting online. I think that is a terrible number and I truly think that this is something that we all have to um, take care of and, uh, and try to fight against it because I think that every woman uh, online has to be as safe as offline. So thank you. Thank you. It's a very important point. We hear that a lot.
Secretary Clinton, Hillary, um, you've given voice to the voiceless. And I know that because you inspired me personally so much. You said, you can do anything. You should do anything. You should do everything. And women in the world, I want you to hear this again. Secretary Clinton said, you have to do everything. You must do everything. It's our responsibility to completely become our whole selves so that we fulfill the whole puzzle. And Mrs. Clinton teaches us how to do that with her actions, everything that she does. You changed my life. Mrs. Clinton has changed the life of countless women all over the world and will continue to do so. What I'd like to say to these countless women is, you don't have to be Hillary Clinton and you don't have to be Sharon Stone to change your life. You just have to know that you have value, that you have singular and important and powerful value. Don't forget how powerful that you are. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you. There's a very active global pushback on women's rights and an attempt to undermine the progress that's been made uh, by just about every minority group in every society that you can think of. So we are facing a whole range uh, of challenges that deserve to be uh, taken seriously and then for people to organize uh, to not just resist them, but overcome them. Margaret Friedlander said, I quote, there's no Christian, no Jews, or Muslim blood. There's only human. Blood. Alina, thank you. Thank you for what you said. But more than that, thank you for being on the front lines. Thank you for being a uh, foreign minister in a time of great tumult and difficulty mm -hmm. and doing it uh, with such strength and grace. I really uh, appreciate it. To my friend Sharon Stone, who literally can look amazingly beautiful in anything. When she walked in, I was like, wow. I mean, who, who besides Sharon Stone could wear a gigantic bathrobe and look stunning? I mean, you are one of a kind, my friend. One of a so I'm so honored to be here with Ban Ki-moon. I had the great pleasure of working with him when he was Secretary General of the United Nations. And he was such a leader on uh, women's issues, uh, protecting the vulnerable, uh, pushing forward on the Millennium Development Goals, helping to bring the Sustainable Development Goals to fruition uh, as goals. They're far from being realized, but uh, it's just an honor to uh, share uh, an event with you. And to Margo Friedlander, the 102-year-old Holocaust survivor uh, who lived in New York for many years but now is a resident of Berlin, we are so proud and happy that you are here with us. As a reminder of the power of the human spirit, of the resilience of the soul, the persistence to live, make a difference in your own life and the lives of others. I hope we take from this evening of creativity and energy and honors uh, is that the world needs all of your intelligence, your innovation, your commitment uh, to help us all come to grips with the challenges we face. I am confident that we can overcome this flood of fear and hate and divisiveness and everything that happens on social media that divides instead of unites, but only if we take it as a personal challenge and work together. And Cinema for Peace, thank you for reminding us of the power of the human spirit, the power of shining that great spotlight on people like Sarifa uh, from Afghanistan, who can inspire us and through that inspiration, 
enable all of us to do more, as Sharon said, than we ever thought was possible. Thank you both so much. I, I've been very blessed to have uh, a series of uh, older women influenced me in my life, and one of them became my godmother late in my life, was Betty Williams, who won the Nobel Prize for uh, the Million Mom March, stopping the uprising in Ireland. And I, there was a, an assassin sent to kill Betty, and he sat outside her offices for a week watching her, and she knew that he was there to kill her. And eventually, after he watched her for a week, he came in and volunteered to work for her <laughs> and stayed with her for the rest of her life. And I said, Jesus, Betty, how did you pull that off? And she said, darling, I loved him into submission. <laughs> Rather, we should make every effort to steer it in the ever desired direction of freedom. The task before us, we sort of all agree with each other, will not be easy. That's the job, Yaka. That's why we should not all agree. That's why we should just act. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I would underrate the attachment uh, of millions of people around the planet people who the United Nations has touched. Because there's a great mistake, obviously, <coughs> as nobody in this panel would do, to think just because the Security Council doesn't function properly and doesn't rise to occasions or has, as Hans pointed out, one of the permanent members violating the self-determination uh, of a, another member of the United Nations by the invasion of Ukraine. Just because these things are happening doesn't mean the UN isn't functioning. And many, many ways with tens of thousands of UN employees doing good work on a daily basis across the range of United Nations activities. But nonetheless, there is a danger that if the UN stands immobilised, as it does at the present moment, as Gaza is demolished brick by brick and 20,000 or more people, innocent people, have already died, if the UN stands immobilised when there's a world crisis such as that, then the UN will bring it, be brought into disrepute. So really this is to all, all young women um, out there. When you keep, first of all, keep going. The stats can be off-putting in Germany, like, uh, like the UK, ranked 45th in the world in terms of uh, female representation in Parliament. But we keep going and we keep at it because we have to keep going going. But don't ever be ashamed of being a woman as a leader or feel you have to overcompensate because you are a woman or feel you have to stop being a woman when you become a leader. Because what makes leaders the best leaders is the ability to empathise, to understand, to feel for humanity because if you lose that you can change nothing. Like in the Congo eastern part of Congo. There's been this conflict going on for a long time. It can be, some people could put it simply that, oh, it may be an ethnic issue. But no, it is an issue, it's a conflict that has to do with the resource share or, or, the, or, or the country, or the, the conflict over resource uh, sharing. Uh, and there is a, a lot of international uh, involvement or, or uh, 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 in the conflict, which is not apparent, but which is there. Congo, as you know, is one of the richest country in terms of natural resources uh, on earth. For instance, uh, every time I go to the uh, on a television program about the situation, my speech is always the same. Look, you Arabs. Don't forget that we have here now in London, in Paris, in Berlin, everywhere we have rallies against the, 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 the situation in Gaza, and many of them are Jews. I would like to salute for their, their courage and their 
humanity. So please don't don't forget this. This is my way, you know, to participate to the end of this wave of of hate. My personal conclusion is that you need leaders. It is usually not bottom up. It is top down. Although it is very very important to have the support of the public. What could be done? It's difficult to create leaders who are ready to, to uh, uh, sacrifice their lives. There is no such lesson in school. That you can suggest options for solutions for all of them and try to analyze it and try to systematically work on, on these solutions even if there is no fire. So you are really uh, destroying everything uh, that w we would like to see, peace and so forth. Stop. You are committing suicide. You are not destroying only Gaza. You are only destroying yourself. Stop what's, what you are doing. This is the message that should, should be delivered everywhere so we can stop this wave of hatred. And then when this, I hope, this wave of hatred is over, then we can resume talking about what should be done that all these values, and boy, I, you know, I'm sorry that they protested by yelling and breaking up the event. I understand, you know, a lot of the strong feelings that people have, and I respect that, but you don't solve problems by yelling at each other. You solve problems by trying to find some common ground and working really hard, long days to see if there are some ways to move forward for our own humanity. And I think that's, you know, what I would like to leave you with. Thank you so much for concluding our World Forum. The world is now going through all this uh, dangerous path because of the uh, climate, climate changes, etc. So this may be one of the ways you can contribute uh, to the work of the United Nations. Even though I'm no longer Secretary General, uh, I've been touring the world and speaking about uh, women's rights, climate change, sustainable development, human rights, etc., etc. And I wish you continued success. So I really count on your contribution uh, for making world better world for. Thank you very much.